Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the quarterfinal stage of the 23-24 John Good Group WFA Cup, where you join myself, Ryan Sipple, and my co-commentator, Dean Williams, for this second game on court A, which will be heavily contested between West Bromwich Albion Throttles and Leeds Chariots, both of which compete in our top flight division, the PTC Therapeutics Premiership. So it should be a really entertaining, heavily contested tie. Dean, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, Ryan. Good to be back right by the side of you as well. So I'm looking forward to this one. I think this will be uh, an interesting game uh, to observe and to watch. And as you've just said, I think there'll be a, a real competitive element to, the, to this one as well. But I must just say, extend my thanks to the John Good Group and Adam Rich and, and all the guys that are here because, you know, what they're helping us and enable us to put on is, is quite outstanding, I think, in terms of the, the venue that we're using. So I've heard lots of positive comments and, and lots of people almost in awe of, of this as a venue, which is a lovely thing for us to witness as part of the WFA, of course. Yeah, we've obviously... Uh, played our football out of the Lee Westwood Sports Centre for many years and have established such a fantastic relationship with that university. But just when we step up for uh, individual occasions such as this at the Darbo Arena, which is such a fantastic venue. I mentioned it on commentary in uh, the earlier game between Hull and Aspire. There's a velodrome, it's an elite cycling centre uh, as well. And it really feels like a significant event, which all of our football is, uh, but it just feels like everything stepped up in terms of quality, both on and off the court. Aspire pr have progressed to the semi-final stage of the John Good Group WFA Cup following that 10-0 win over Hull and East Yorkshire. West Bromwich Albion likewise have booked their place in the semi-final draw at half past 12, which will be conducted by yourself and Adam. Yes, and I think maybe a couple of the members of the of the John Good group as well, which will be great. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, that's that nervous bit, isn't it? When you pull somebody out, some people are happy, some people are not happy, but it, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I look forward to doing those kind of things. And it's, it's, a, it's a great day in store. So as mentioned, West Bromwich Allen Thrustles and Lee's Chariots compete in the top division, the Premiership. And they're very similarly matched currently as the league sits. West Bromwich Albion Throstles sit in fifth. Leeds Chariots in seventh. Only two points separate them. To our central referee, Mark Kerrison, with assistance of Alan Murray and John Sherman, just trying to designate who will get kickoff first. It looks like it will be that of the designated home team. West Bromwich Albion Throstles. Once play is underway, we'll go through the starting for for both teams and bring you the action live from the Derby Arena. Just for some context, if you're tuning in across our streams, people present at the Derby Arena have silent disco headsets so they can listen to myself and Dean commentate on the action live. It's a really nice element that we've included. And we are underway. We'll be Dan Rigby and Lee's Chariot taking the kickoff as opposed to the West Bromwich Albion Thrustles as I assumed. When the ball rolls out of play, I'll bring you them squads. Amy Wharton trying to force some pressure on Leeds Chariots early on. Lewis Harris with his first involvement just to try and take it out part the path of the Thrustles number seven. Oliver Rock. And Rigby does brilliantly well, has the option of Jack Maxwell on this left-hand wing, controls it in reverse. He'll do well to pick out Jack Britton on the opposite side. A wall of Throstles player did well to prevent it. So for Throstles, they start with Barris Innell as the designated goalkeeper in that lime green kit as Maxwell just fires it into the side of his chair. Early pressure. Lucas Christa, Amy Wharton and Oliver Rock. The other three players. Leeds Chariots comprised of Lewis Harris, Dan Rigby, Jack Britton and Jack Maxwell. Christa, 
does well to dispossess Harris. No doubt they'll want to try and capitalise when Lewis Harris pushes up into them advanced roles. The counter-attack will surely be key to any success they have. It's Mark Kerrison, ready to blow the whistle. Harris into Dan Rigby, just ushers it over to Jack Maxwell on the right-hand wing. Fantastic pass off the front of Jack Britton's chair, and Jack Maxwell miscalculates the trajectory of that ball, and it just ricochets out for a goal kick, but the warning signs are there early on. First real chance there, Brian. It certainly was. Interested to see how the relationship between Lewis and Dan develops for, for Leeds. It's such a exciting partnership. Lewis Harris, for those that don't know, uh, transferred from West Bromwich Albion uh, in last summer. It would have been now. Uh, and he's starting to forge a really effective partnership with Dan Rigby. I know they're both so highly regarded uh, in the England setup and are, are both on the pathway. Uh, they've both represented their country at senior level, not at a major European or world competition, but the future is most certainly bright. Just guided over to Jack Britton, swept up by Lucas Christa. There's options on the bench for both teams. Single substitute for Leeds Chariots, that of Harrison Taylor, John Dixon and Jonathan Davies comprise West Bromwich Albion Throssell's substitutes. A lot of strength in depth. That will no doubt play a key part to any success that these teams have. A lot of pressure from, from Leeds early on. It's another fantastic game on Court B with Newcastle United Foundation against Teesside. It can also be found on the WFA's YouTube with Greg Baxter bringing you the action live. Here you're joining myself, Ryan Sipple and Dean Williams for the action between Throstles and Leeds Chariots. We've had just under five minutes it remains Throssels nil, Chariots nil. Greg did ask me a few moments ago, saying, who's, who's the best meal, Ryan? I didn't know how to answer that. Greg's better than me. So on the assumption that he won't be listening, you're better. <laughs> but if I'm co-commentating on that one a little bit later on, you might hear a reverse of that. Greg's the best in the business. There you go. It's a very kind thing to say, Ryan. Well, unfortunately, you'll be demoted for the semi-finals as we consolidate to one court. It will be myself and Mr. Baxter bringing you the action live, whether you're in situ here at the very impressive Derby Arena or watching from wherever you are. I know we have uh, eager audiences around the world, which I think speaks volumes to kind of the, uh, the work that's been done by Alex Dowdin and Jack Humphreys to increase that social presence and ensure that our football can be watched by as many people as possible. Great shout. What an amazing job they're doing. Just while that uh, ball's gone out of play, it was that feedback you just gave me about you're already, I've literally sat here for what, three, four minutes? What was the feedback? You literally just told me that I'm demoted straight oh, away. Oh, you are from demoted. I, that's a bit harsh. I think, should we put a vote up on that from the audience? Let's not do that. I think the feedback would be even worse in my favour to not do it. So as suspected, very little to separate these sides in the opening six minutes. There's so much at stake and I was just having a few discussions with people around the Derby Arena. Should West Brom and Aspire draw each other in the semi-final, there is a position there um, 
for that televised St George's Park final as part of the FA Disability Cup weekend on offer. So any one of Throstles, Leeds Chariots, Newcastle or Teesside could be competing for our National Cup competition live on TNT Sports on June 30th. And that's such an incentive, that's such a fantastic opportunity for any player and team. We obviously had Aspire versus Newcastle United Foundation last year. And just the support that Newcastle brought was absolutely incredible. First game I watched before I got involved in power chair football, that. Dan Rigby attempts an effort wide of the left-hand post. Not before the two-on-one is awarded in favour of the Chariots. And they're now going to take this indirect free kick via Dan Rigby. Has to go via the chair of a teammate and or opponent. Jack Britton on the right. Jack Maxwell, well marked by Amy Wharton on the left. He opts to go for the former, Britton. Back to Dan Rigby on the edge, closed by Oliver Rock. Good defence from Amy Wharton. Has to be very cautious with Dan Rigby, ready to pounce on any loose ball. Lewis Harris, for the first time in the past four or five minutes, has a duty to perform in defence. Contact between the chairs of Harris and Krista. Out of play for a Thossel's ball. It's a very cagey affair, Ryan, this. Yeah, I think the success for Throstles will come via them quick counter-attacks with Leeds adopting such a high line. They're going to want to break at pace and with accuracy if they're to register any success. When these two met in the Premiership division back in December, nothing could separate them. 1-1 that finished. So if that's anything to go by, this should be very hard to call. Of course, if this finishes a draw, we will have extra time to five minute periods. And if nothing is to separate them at the end of that, we will, of course, have a penalty shootout. Drama if you're a neutral, not if you're in it. No, with the. Um, the quick turnaround from quarter-final to semi-final. Uh, certainly these uh, these latter quarter-finals on court A and court B, they'll want to try and win it within the regulation 40. Could be a quick turnaround for semi-finals as these chariots starting to pick up some pace and the accuracy in attack. Dan Rigby attempting an effort at goal, just swept up by Throstle's defence. Jack Britton does brilliantly well to vacate that space on the left to allow Dan Rigby to continue the attack. Lewis Harris very advanced, and this is what I'm talking about. Throstles will want to capitalise when he commits going forward. Jack Maxwell just drops back and he switches over with Jack Britton now. He's a very adept goalkeeper, so they'll have confidence with him being the most defensive of the four players. Harris, ricochet off the left-hand post. Probably the most credible opportunity Leeds have had all game. Tactics are clear, aren't they, from both teams here? They really are. I think defensively, Frossel's set up to frustrate and break. Uh, Leeds showing their intent, but as you've said already, Ryan, in terms of that uh, forward momentum that could leave them caught out of the back. An interesting battle. 
It certainly has. This is when throttles need to potentially break. There is an open goal, but Dan Rigby probably going to be guiding it out of play, which he does. If they can pick their passes in them sort of passages of play, they'll no doubt trouble leads. Yet to do so. Eight minutes left to be played. West Bromwich Albion throttles nil. Leeds Chariots nil. I tell you, just looking round, Ryan. Look at the look at the audience. And fans. this is, this is something we've we've spoken about that differs from the Lee Westwood Sports Centre. Is it facilitates that viewing experience, um, and something that myself and Alex were comparing it to. And you can absolutely use this reference point. Is that of the World Cup competed in Sydney last yeah. year, where you shift away from kind of a uh, a closed uh, internal sport to a real spectator event. Obviously, as you've already rightfully mentioned, the fantastic sport from the support from the John Good group. But we hope this is a sign of things to come. Whether that's one-off events or occasions or uh, other competitions that can be competed at such prestigious locations and venues such as this. We're gonna get our first substitute of the game. Both teams have made a switch up for Leeds Chariots. Jack Britton has come off. Harrison Taylor, the player, coming on for West Bromwich Albion Throssels. Jonathan Davis replaces Amy Wharton. Krista, all the way back to Barris in all. The two designated goalkeepers battling away just inside the throttles half. Dan Rigby to take this indirect free kick. All of his teammates well marked. As Jonathan Davis dispossesses. Across the box to Jack Maxwell. Trying to return the favour to Dan Rigby. Harris Innall just on the edge of his box. Potential break here for Throssels. Jonathan Davis reversing down that left-hand wing. Brilliantly cut out by Dan Rigby. Just seems like defence is cancelling out attack for both of these teams at the moment. Both of these teams had to earn their spot in the quarter-final stage. West Bromwich Albion Throssels with a well-earned 2-0 victory over Seven Oaks. Leeds produced a dominant one-sided victory over Manchester United. Jonathan Davis just reorientates his chair to face Lewis Harris head-on. Very cagey 15 minutes we've had here. Jonathan Davis does brilliantly well. Cheers from spectators around the Derby Arena. There's, a, there's a, an awful lot of West Brom support. That's a fantastic ball, just cut out by Lewis Harris. Shouts for two on one. Ricochets out. 
for a Throstles ball. Indirect free kick brought back by Mark Kerrison. Very quickly taken. Jonathan Davis attempts a goal and squeezes it between Harris and Rigby, who did not anticipate that passage of play coming so quickly. Brilliant goal. Just about to say, it's easy to say this after the event, but they're growing into the game. And I think the introduction of Jonathan Davis has made a real difference. Yeah. Real, that's a great finish. I have to give finish. credit to Lucas Christa there, taking that indirect free kick so quickly. Didn't give a second for Leeds to set defensively. And with three minutes left of this first half, arguably against the run of play, West Bromwich Albion Throstles are a goal to the good. And Lee Carrick very much have to chase this game now. <laughs> Had a feeling that the first goal would be so significant. West Bromwich the jabbing crosswinds were the one to get it, which they've obviously done so now. Could just sit back for a little bit. They're less comfortable to sort of impression as we've seen them. Second now, Oliver Rock, millimetres away from connecting with that goal. No doubt the intended recipient for Jonathan Davis on the left-hand wing in a lot of space. And, and that goal has just opened up this game significantly. Harrison Taylor is fairly isolated since his introduction earlier in the half. Match. And Rigby has come off. We wonder why he's chosen to make that substitution. That foot is coming back on. He's such a key influential player. I don't know if it was tactical or there may be a chair related issue. Weathered the storm brilliantly at the start. Just a little bit of storm. Oh, David switches it with it. And Oliver Rock would have liked to have seen him stay in reverse there, just readjusting and driving onto that ball. He lost a second or two of momentum. Showing signs of frustration. He just maintained his momentum on the burst and flicked into the ball. It would have been would have caused Jack Britton in the lead Charis goal more issues than it ended up doing into the final minute. From the Javis Russell ended this half much the better of the two teams. We apologise if people tuning into the stream are experiencing any technical difficulties. Hopefully we're back up and running now. Oliver Rock. Waiting in the centre, takes possession of the ball. Takes some time as well. Really good attacking intent from Throstles. Looking to put their stamp on the game as Jonathan Davis looks to scores his own and his team's second of the game. We're now into regulation time. Anything that Mark Kerrison has accrued across this first half. Really livening up, isn't it? Yeah, I think they've uh, they weathered that storm. I think the, the first few minutes very very well, uh, and as I said before, I think the tactics from both teams are quite quite clear. But you know, credit to Frostles. I think they've I think they've managed this beautifully. Well, it's a long way to go, isn't there? Leeds have got a lot of quality, so I, I'd expect this to this is far from done. But I, I think Frostles will be very impressed with how they've dealt with this. Yeah, worth noting that one of their key players, John. Um, John Dixon is yet to feature in this quarter final, so no doubt he will have a part to play in the second half. Jonathan Davis has been absolutely brilliant since his introduction. Frostles coaches that of Paul Hunt and Matt Bodine as the referee signals the half time break. Thank you to all that are tuning in across our stream and are here at the Derby Arena listening across the wireless headphones. We hope you can join myself and Dean for the second half shortly. West Bromwich Albion Throstles 1, lead Chariots nil.
Hello everyone and welcome back to this second half of this John God Good Group WFA Cup quarter final fixture between West Bromwich Albion Throstles and Lee's Chariots, currently separated by a single Jonathan Davis goal and a brilliant one at that. Once again, joined on commentary by WFA chairperson Dean Williams. You all okay? Very good. That was a compelling first half, I have to say. I think it's equally tight on the other pitch. I think somebody said it's nil-nil. That's brilliant. I'll bring up the score of that, should there be any. Uh, it looks like Dan Rigby has re-entered the action. I think there may have been a, a technical uh, fault with his chair in the lead-up to that opening goal. Is that right? Certainly the talk of the town. Okay. Um, hopefully it's all fixed and addressed now. He's so influential to the play and to, to Leeds' attack. Maxwell into Dan Rigby, distributes it out to the left to Harrison Taylor. Pick off from Lewis Harris, doesn't meet its intended target of Jack Maxwell and just in that break of play I'll bring you the starting four we've got Barris Innell, Lucas Christa, Oliver Rock and Jonathan Davies comprising West Bromwich Albion, Throssell's starting team, Lee Chariot, Lewis Harris, Dan Rigby, Jack Maxwell and Harrison Taylor. Maxwell patiently lets it roll into his chair Across the Throstles box, as was the case in the first half. Certainly for the first 10, 15 minutes, it was fairly one-sided. A lot of attacking intent from Lee's chariot, but Throstles weathered the storm and were able to open the scoring. Started exactly the same way, right, as the first half. And it, it had, and that's why I think Throstles will be comfortable there. So solid defensively. We've seen that both in the WFA Cup competition and the National League. They'll just try to pick their moments when they break. They won't force anything too much. Look for the spaces, and no doubt they'll want to double their advantage in this quarter-final stage. The semi-finals, once again, the semi-final draw set to take place at half past 12 this afternoon. Newcastle United Foundation and Teesside are currently contesting the other quarter-final on court B. That one is nil-nil. work from Lucas Christa to just prevent Lewis Harris generating an opportunity. Finds the space eventually to test Barris Innell in the Throstles goal. Leeds Chariots constantly readjusting and changing their approach. Lewis Harris well closed down by Oliver Rock. Heavy ricochet. Good defensive work. So Oliver Rock breaks. I think it's really, really important that Leeds Chariots don't get, try not to get overly frustrated here as well and focus on the, the, the game that they want to play because, you know, West Brom are making this very, very difficult for them. They've just got to be patient, haven't they? Yeah. Take comfort in the fact that we still have 16 and a half minutes to be played. You can see there's a little bit of frustration creeping in. There will be, but as we spoke about in the first half, this is such a significant occasion with such a lucrative prize at the end in terms of that position at the St George's Park televised final that nerves will play a considerable factor in the overall outcome of the day just managing them, having confidence in their ability. They have the, they've got the quality, there's no question about that. Now, of 
play for Lee's Chariots kick in. Locked up, very congested in that final third. Jonathan Davis has to be careful. His chair cannot enter the designated box of West Bromwich Albion Throstles. Otherwise, Lee's Chariots will get an indirect free kick off the back of Barris Innell's chair. Down to Harrison Taylor, gets the pick off. Lucas Christa has to be very alert, as does Jonathan Davis here, has to back off. Just takes possession, inviting the pressure from Lewis Harris. Just picks his pocket and resumes the Leeds attack. Ricochet into Barris Innell's chair. Controls it well. Flicked to Jonathan Davis. Harris, assured clearance out of play from the West Bromwich Albion Throstles number 18. The pr pressure's relentless. I, I, the defensively, Throstles have done at this point superbly well. It's just riding that storm, which they did so, so effectively in the first half. But Throstles are taking comfort in that score line currently. Jonathan Davis to the right, Oliver Rock to the left. He opts for the latter off the front of Rock's chair into Krista. Just controls it, has to readjust. Stan Rigby closes the space. Neither wants to yield in their pursuit of that ball. Dan Rigby comes away, guides it down to Harrison Taylor. Just controls it, flicks it, goal bound, out of play for a corner kick. It's almost like it's a total camp in the half of the Frostles right now. Into the box. Dribbled out of danger by Lucas Christa. Quickly closed down by Lewis Harris. This is good from Throstles. Jonathan Davis and Oliver Rock both in support. I think we're going to have a set ball. The ball was trapped between the two players. Dan Rigby and Lucas Christa will contest this. Oliver Rock has to be careful of his placement, just drops off and resumes the role of that central player. A lot of in attacking intent from Lee's Chariots, but not necessarily the quality to match. No, it's like a brick wall. There is a lot of resistance yeah, from Throstles. I think we have to give credit to Throstles for that defensive work. Yeah. Barris Innell, a recent acquisition for West Bromwich Albion Throstles, following a transfer from Manchester United in the summer. But a really exciting team in the Premiership, Throstles, guided, as mentioned, by Paul Hunt and Matt Bodine. Jonathan Davis, desperately trying to double the advantage of the designated home team. Got two options in support.
Krista. It's all about managing the game now for Throstles. They've got that advantage. They want to try and prevent quick, decisive breaks such as that. We're going to get a substitution. Jack Maxwell, the player coming off. Been fairly isolated in this top right-hand corner. Jack Britton, the player coming on. Rigby. Fossils yet to utilise John Dixon. Amy Wharton also an option off the bench. Ricochet falls kindly for Dan Rigby. This is where they can really be effective. Had Jonathan Davies successfully, successfully angled his chair in a fashion there, it would have very much been a second goal of the game. Possibly game over at that point. And this is where Throstles need to think about the fact that Lee's Chariots are committing players forward in their pursuit of that equaliser. That's going to leave defensive frailties and vulnerabilities in behind. A two-goal buffer would surely see them progress to the semi-final stage. But knowing this sport, never say never. It's not short of drama. As you can see from on that graphic, Newcastle United, Teesside remains goalless. Looks like that way one is making its way into additional time if neither can influence the scoreline in the remaining seven minutes. On this one with myself and Dean, West Bromwich Albion Throstles lead by goal to nil. Kick in to be taken by Lucas Christa. John Dixon has entered the action in place of Jonathan Davis. Can he have as much of an impact and influence as Davis, who will unlikely feature again? He's had a tremendous game. And he Jonathan really Jonathan has. Jonathan Davis has just been a superb. You know, the goal aside, I think he's defensive qualities as well. You know, such a valuable asset to their team. A team almost in transition with a number of recent transfers, just try, trying to learn and adopt the Throstles way. And they're doing so, so effectively. in the Premiership of their 13 games. They've won six, drawn two, lost five. Leeds Chariots very similar of their 12. They've won six, drawn four, lost two. And as mentioned at the start, only two points separate them in the National League Premiership. Here in the John Good Group WFA Cup, it looks like Throstles have one foot in the semi-finals and this late pressure will no doubt please their coaches these chariots with a metaphorical mountain to climb five minutes to be played they need a spark don't they so, something's got to ignite here it just hasn't really clicked i think they they grew frustrated with such uh, an astute defensive display from throstles yeah. and have lost momentum Still just under five minutes for them to try and influence this result. But as it stands, it will be Throstles progressing. Dan Ruby unable to find Jack Maxwell, who's come on once again in the place of Harrison Taylor. Good pick off. Lewis Harris is going to attempt an effort, a goal off the back of Lucas Christie's chair. 
And that's better from Chariot. Quickly taken into the back of Luke Christ Christie's chair, trapped by Jack Maxwell. They'll be happy. The ball just being locked up in this bottom right-hand corner. John Dixon yet to have any real involvement since his introduction. It's good work from Krista. Brilliant game management. Nice distribution. Maxwell tries to switch the play to Britain, unable to make contact. Out for a Throstles ball. The clock is directly in front of us, Ryan, and you can see that evaporating pretty quickly now. Yeah, it certainly is. Three and a half minutes to be played. Brilliant work from John Dixon. To just control that ball and guide it into that top right-hand corner. Just wrapping his chair around the ball to prevent the lead to break. Certainly signs of frustration for the Leeds players and coaches. Krista down to John Dixon. Jack Maxwell trying to ram his way down that left-hand wing out for a Throstles ball. <laughs> As a result of a few delays, that semi-final draw will be conducted a little bit later than the scheduled 12.30 time. Hopefully we can make up the difference and the semi-finals can still take place at 1.45 and 3 p.m. respectively here on Court A at the Derby Arena. Whether you're tuning in live in the venue or watching across our streams, Oliver Rock with the corner kick down to Lucas Christa approaching the final minute. Now or never for Leeds. This is and this is where game management comes into it. Oliver Rock just trapping it in that top this left hand it. corner. This is it. And this absolutely is it. Surely they have to make this chance count. And they'll have to try and do what they've been able unable to in the thirty nine minutes thus far. Break that defensive work of Throstles. Find the gaps. To register an equaliser, have to commend Lucas Christa. He's been so effective, both in defensive and attacking phases of play for Throstles. And as I've got a co-commentator for this one, I'm going to push you for a player of the match, Dean. Oh. I mean, that's, that is a very difficult one. I, I have to give that to a Frostles player, and there's something dramatic that happens in the last few seconds now. I've mentioned his name a couple of times. I think the impact that Jonathan Davis has had, not just the goal that he scored, but I, I know he's on the bench right now, but I think his impact's been incredible. Um, I would also, I think, very, very closely run by Lucas Christa as well. I think he's had a superb game. This is a fantastic opportunity, Jack Maxwell. Guides an effort goal bound, cleared by Barris Innall. That would have been heartbreak for Throstles, who defended so effectively this game. We're into added time, so anything that our referee, Mark Kerrison, has accrued across this 20 minute half. And it looks almost certain that West Bromwich Albion Throstles will progress to the semi final stage of the 23 24 John Good Group WFA Cup where they'll sit one game away from comprising that final at St George's Park. Out of play from Lewis Harris. And surely that will be it. 
They won't want to do anything rash to jeopardise what is going to look and be an absolutely fantastic win for Throssels. As John Dixon just picks out Oliver Rock on this left-hand wing. Look at the watch. I think we're just about there, aren't we? Krista has to be careful there. Harris quick to capitalise, and that will be it. I hope you can hear what it means to some of the fans at the Derby Arena. A fantastic orchestrated win by Matt Bodin and Paul Hunt. Sees West Bromwich Albion Throssels win by a goal to nil and progress to the John Good Group semi-final stage. Brilliant game. We, we thought it would be, didn't we? We thought it would be tight and cagey and I think, uh, listen, congratulations to Throssels. I think commiserations to Chariots. Chariots clearly had that attacking intent, but the defensive performance from Throssels, I thought, was absolutely outstanding. And I think if you look at that as crossing two parts to a game, defensively and offensively, I think the, the reality is I think Throssels deserved that win. Yeah, absolutely. So huge congratulations to West Bromwich Albion Throssels. As mentioned, the semi-final stage of the draw will take place shortly. I'm not sure what the score is between the Newcastle and Teesside quarterfinal. Um, but that can also be found live across the WFA's YouTube. Semi-final number one to be confirmed as to which teams will be present in it will be kicking off at around quarter to two. Hope you can join us for that one. Thank <laughs> you.